Welcome to the Ben Fuller home here in Fullersburg Woods. Today, we're going to go on a journey through time and learn a little bit more about this place and its deep past. So sit back and enjoy as the Fullersburg Historic Foundation presents Fullersburg, a light show. Our journey begins long before this house was built, long even before human beings came to this land. Let's travel back 12,000 years in Earth's history. At that time, Fullersburg was covered in a massive glacier, a mile high. Eventually, the sun melted the glaciers, and life came to Fullersburg. Large pine trees grew into lush forests. Big creatures roamed here too, like the woolly man. Also buffalo, deer, and elk. Following all this game, Native American hunters arrived here 10,000 years ago. Since then, many tribes have called Fullersburg home, including the Sauk, Illinois, Miami, and Potawatomi. We know this because they left hunting and cooking tools carved out of rock which are thousands of years old. Fast forwarding to 1672, some of those tribesmen led an adventurous pair of French explorers just six miles downriver from where we are right now. Their names were Father Jacques Marquette and Louis Joliet, and they were the first non-native men to ever explore this area. They helped map the Mississippi River from Chicago. And they also spread the Catholic faith. More men followed after Marquette and Joliet, building forts and fur trading posts all around the Chicagoland area. Eventually, the native people were fed up with the settlers taking their homeland. Chief Blackhawk, a Sauk warrior led a bloody war against settlers in the U.S. Army to gain back the lands he thought were stolen from his people. However, Chief Blackhawk did not succeed and the U.S. Army, led by famous General Winfield Scott, 
forced the Fullersburg Potawatomi to sell their land in Illinois in 1833. It was during this war that General Scott and his men were chasing Chief Blackhawk West, and he decided to set up camp here in Fullersburg. Upon learning this place had no name, he called it Brush Hill after the hilly terrain and thick hazel brush that surrounded him. With the tribes moving out, settlers from the east moved in. Only a year after the war, a 24-year-old man from Broome, New York, traveled along the old Indian trail and arrived here. His name was Benjamin Fuller. Benjamin saw the open, fertile fields and clean streams of Salt Creek and fell in love. He bought land and decided to bring his parents and 11 brothers and sisters out here to settle. Two of his sisters traveled out here in a new way, by steamship. The Fuller family and others worked hard to make this place a welcoming refuge for travelers. Many people traveled along the old Plank Road, now known as Ogden Avenue, to reach Naperville, and they decided to spend the night here in Fullersburg along the way. Settlers Orient Grant and Lieutenant Sherman King built a tavern along the Plank Road and named it the Castle Inn. The Castle Inn was a warm and welcoming place where travelers could have a warm meal and dance the night away. Fuller built another hotel and tavern across the street, as well as a general store in 1843, which he called the Farmer's Home. That building still stands as the York Tavern just down the road. More and more people worked to make Fullersburg their home, too. Benjamin Fuller built this farmhouse, the one you are looking at right now, more than 180 years ago. The house was massive for its time, with two stories and a summer kitchen addition out back. The house features a full porch, Detailings meant to mimic a Greek temple. But the house's bones are what make it unique. This is thought to be the oldest balloon frame house in existence. Balloon framing, invented in Chicago, used notch wooden sheathing. Because of this, the home was put up faster and was lighter than the heavy timber framing that came before it. Ben Fuller loved this place and lived in his home till his death in 1863. 
Another early settler helped change the face of Fullersburg forever. Frederick Grau arrived here in 1838 from Germany. And with his boss, he helped build a dam. Giving Grau the power of rushing water from Salt Creek and the Mammoth Springs right beside him. In 1850, he completed the Grand Grau Mill you see today. Grau Mill was the economic center of Fullersburg for many years, grinding wheat, corn, and producing syrup too. also holds its share of secrets. Only ten years after the mill was completed, the nation broke out the Civil War. Fullersburg allied with the Union, and quickly the Grau Mill was being used as a secret stop on the Underground Railroad. Slaves would come by night, hiding in wagons, and spend the night right here while on their journey to freedom. Also during the war, in the dead of winter, 1862, by the stove fire of the Castle Inn, Lowy Fuller was born into the world. A performer since birth, Loie was destined for stardom. She moved to Paris and became one of the world's most famous dancers. <laughs> Using lights and elaborate dresses, she created a dance style the world had never seen before, the Serpentine. As the epitome of the Art Nouveau movement, she inspired sculptors like Rudin. Artists like Lutrec. And actresses like Sarah Bernhardt. Her dances filled the world with light and wonder. However, the Fullersburg she returned to was on the decline. In the same year she was born, the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy train line decided it would lay its new railroad not through Fullersburg, but through the farms and bogs of the city. This new transport shifted life to the up-and-coming community of Hinsdale and Fullersburg was never the same again. But history is still alive in Fullersburg. All it needs is a little bit of light to shine upon it.